The story begins with a child named Yogiri, who is looking for a girl named Asaka in some facility, and he finds her being held hostage by another girl. The girl warns Yogiri not to make any move, however he kills the girl without moving a muscle. Asaka is surprised by this, but he tells her that they should go home. The scene then cuts to a girl named Tomo, who's waking a grown-up Yogiri in a bus, and asks him how he is able to sleep through this. We then see two students dead, who were killed by a dragon. He makes the dragon let go of the bus by attacking it with a mic, but the dragon then charges in, and is about to blast them with its fire breath. Tomo is afraid, and leans onto him, pressing her giant plots against him. However, Yogiri looks at the dragon, and uses his ability to kill it without doing anything. Tomo is surprised, and he tells her that she's safe now. He then starts gaming on a console, and Tomo is surprised to see his calm attitude. After that, he asks her to explain what happened. She explains that as they were heading to the field trip, they got transported to another world after entering a tunnel. A girl entered the bus, who introduced herself as the sage named Xi'an. The professor tries to ask her what's going on, but the psycho girl kills him for interrupting her. She tells them that her attack power is 530,000, and asks them why didn't they laugh as it was supposed to be a joke, and goes on to kill the bus driver because her joke failed and this made her angry. All the students are scared, and she tells them that they've been summoned by her as prospective sages. This world is ruled by sages, but sometimes it's necessary to replenish their numbers. She then uses magic which makes everyone glow except for four students including Tomo. Xi'an mentions that she has installed a system called Battle Song in all of them, and it's called a gift in this world. They can use it to view their status and improve their skills, and they'll have a time limit of one month. Tomo then tells her that she didn't get the gift, and Xi'an tells her that some people aren't a good match for this gift, so she should just accept that. She then tells them that their first mission will start in an hour, and leaves. Tomo's friend Mikochi mentions that they'll be attacked by a dragon in an hour, and just then, a student named Sugiri Yazaki, who has the general class tells the student that they need to work together, and asks them to tell their skills. Tomo notices that apart from her, Ayaka, Yuchiro and Yogiri are the ones who didn't glow. The students then start leaving the bus without telling, and when Yuchiro approaches them, Suguru tells them to stay in the bus as a decoy, threatening them with his strength. A student named Asuha uses her skill to cast magic to make them more attractive to the dragon, and Suguru tells them that every class member agreed to this plan. Tomo is shocked that even her friend Mikochi also agreed to this, and they lock them inside the bus. After that, the dragon attacked the bus, and Tomo tells him that this is what happened. Yogiri then wonders about charging his gaming console, and Tomo is shocked that he's more worried about gaming. After that, they exit the bus, and see that they have the option to go to either the hill, city, or forest. Just then, they notice three students flying towards them. Yogiri wonders if he should kill them as they left them behind to die, but Tomo is against that idea. The students are shocked to see the dragon dead, and they notice Tomo and Yogiri alive. The student Daimon Hanakua with healer class is pissed that their plan to turn Tomo into zombie was ruined, and Ryasuke Higashida with hero class tells him that he already told them they could be alive, and Yoshiaki Fukuhara with necromancer class thinks the idea of controlling Tomo as zombie pretty creepy. Higashida then shoots a fireball, and threatens Tomo to come with them, but Yogiri decides to show them who's the boss. He tells Higashida to die, while other students laugh, but suddenly Higashida falls dead. He then kills Fukuhara as well, and asks Hanakua to check on them if they're really dead. Hanakua then casts his healing magic on them, but they don't revive, and Tomo realizes that the dragon was also killed by him. Yogiri tells him that his ability is called instant death to any target, and he can kill anyone with his thoughts. Hanakua tries to attack him secretly, but Yogiri senses it. He tells him that his ability can also tell if someone is hostile toward him, 
and it's possible that his target could die if they have killing intent towards him. Hanakoa kneels down, defeated, and starts crying. He then reveals that this is his second time visiting this world, and in their first time about a year ago, they were summoned to defeat a demon lord. Yogiri realizes that they defeated the demon lord last time, and returned to their original world, but he doesn't recall them being absent. Hanakoa mentions that when they returned only a few hours had passed, and Yogiri thought of the possibility of returning home. Yogiri then tries to kill Hanakoa, but he pleads for mercy, and offers to become Tomo's servant. He puts on a slave collar, and becomes her slave, but she doesn't want such a disgusting pig like him, so she transfers his ownership to Yogiri. He begs Yogiri not to kill him, and Yogiri asks him to leave all his valuables behind and stand in the forest, as he suspects that Hanakoa may betray them again. Tomo then thinks that they have never spoken to each other before, but he still chose to protect her, and asks him about the reason. After thinking for a while, Yogiri tells her that it's because her giant plots felt so soft when she leaned toward him, and Tomo realizes that he's just another perv lord. The scene then cuts to Xi'an lying in her bed, and a man named Yuichi comes there to report about the prospective sages. He tells her that there were four fatalities, and she's surprised to learn that two of them were S-rank, which she didn't foresee. Yuichi suspects that it could be instant death magic, and they should exercise caution. Xi'an realizes about the system install failing, but thinks it's not worth worrying about, and goes back to bed. As the story continues, we see Tomo and Yogiri reaching the nearest town. Tomo notices that the gates are closing since it's already evening, and she drags Yogiri towards the gates, but the guards ask them to wait. Later, a guy named Masahiko appears, who is troubled by dealing with another group of sage candidates, and tells them that they were told not to interfere with them. Yogiri asks him about reaching the capital, but he refrains from providing any help, and offers only Tomo to stay with him tonight. She is shocked, but immediately leaves with Yogiri. Later, Yogiri questions her actions, and Tomo reveals her fear of Yogiri killing Masahiko, to which Yogiri tells her not to see him as some kind of maniac. As they explore the town, a cat girl named Mireu approaches, offering assistance for free, and her goal is to befriend male sage candidates. They decide to accept her help, and later we see that they have done some shopping. However, they encounter some goons, and realize that the cat girl tricked them. The goons tell them that they're doing this not just for the money, but also as a stress relief, as they hate sage candidates with powers, and since they can't fight with powerful candidates, they look for the weak ones to bully. Tomo warns Mireu that Yogiri is an overpowered MC, but she doesn't believe it, and they're about to attack them. Just then, Yogiri uses his ability to instantly kill all the people behind him. Yogiri then experiments with his ability to avoid killing them fully, and he uses his ability on specific body parts like arm, leg, and eye. He thinks that killing individual parts is not efficient as this is just torturing them. Mireu and the goon boss try to escape, but they're also eventually killed. Just then, a few guards arrive who have some questions for them regarding this situation. The guard captain's name is Edelgard, and her assistant's name is George. Yogiri states that they just found these guys like this. Edelgard tells him that they've been watching them, and their plan was to tail these goons to their hideout. She mentions that the guards have been blessed with the protection of the sages, so their gift won't work on them. However, her assistant tells her that as per his appraisal skill they don't have any gift, and they think that someone else must be responsible for this. Yogiri then asks George for a place to stay, and meanwhile, Edelgard notices that one of the goons is still alive. After that, we see Tomo excited to get a castle-like hotel, and Yogiri asks if they should get a single room. However, Tomo is afraid of the plot development so they get separate rooms. Later, Tomo wonders if Yogiri is interested in her romantically, but thinks that he's only interested in her giant personality. Just then, she gets scared when a spirit appears, but she calms down as it resembles her big sister. The spirit introduces herself as Mokomoko Denura, who is the spirit of her ancestor, 
and she has come as her guardian angel who will protect her from danger. Tomo wonders why she didn't show up when she was in danger earlier, but the spirit mentions that it was because of Yogiri, as it was scared of him, and Tomo is surprised to learn that his power will work on spirits as well. Moko then tells her that she can protect her from the supernatural, and it was her who prevented her from receiving the gift. Tomo gets angry on learning this fact, but the spirit tells her that if she had accepted the gift, she would become a puppet of the sage. Her only desire now is for Tomo to return to her original world, and to survive in this world she'll pass on the true arts of their ancestor school. The scene shifts to Tomo meeting Yogiri the following day, and she wonders if Yogiri plans to catch up with others. Just then, a hotel staff member named Celestina introduces herself. Yogiri tells Tomo that Celestina has been helping him in locating their classmates, preparing language translations, getting items to hide their status, and she also made a charger for his gaming console. Celestina then hands them tickets to the capital train, and agrees to safeguard some of Yogiri's gold. Later, we see them on a train, and Tomo is assisting in charging his console. Yogiri now sees Mokomoko after Tomo told him about her existence, and only they can see her. Tomo then asks about their classmates, and Yogiri tells her that they're training inside the forest. Just then, Yogiri senses danger, and shields Tomo from an attack. We are then cut to the guards interrogating the blind goon which they captured earlier. They have tried healing magic on him, but it didn't work. A sage named Lane, plucks his eye, and casts healing magic on him. It restores his eyes, but he still can't see anything. We learn that she's a vampire, and she bites him which improves his abilities, but doesn't cure his blindness. Just then, a guy named Ein with the hero class attacks them. Meanwhile, those in the wrecked train learn a sage is engaged in battle with an aggressor nearby. Yogiri and Tomo then see a robot, and think that it must be the aggressor. They see a sage named Santoro engaged in battle with the robot, and he freezes the bystanders while attacking the robot. Meanwhile, we see Ayn attacking Lane, but she easily recovers. She wonders why he's attacking them, as heroes should be fighting with demon lords, but he mentions that all sages must be killed, and unleashes a powerful blast, claiming victory. On the other hand, Yogiri asks Santoro about attacking them, but he just sees them as low life, and asks them to kneel before a sage. Yogiri gets annoyed and kills him. The robot comes near them, but mentions that he's not there to fight. Meanwhile, we see that Lane is still alive, and Ayn is shocked that she survived his attack. Lane tells him that she's immortal, and he admits defeat. She throws him away, and asks the guards to track down Yogiri. Meanwhile, the robot offers Yogiri his assistance, and he inquires about returning to his world. The robot mentions that they would need the coordinates of the world, and massive energy to escape from here. Yogiri asks him to give info on finding those, and asks Tomo if she needs anything from robot. She's not sure, but just then Mokomoko tells that she has something in mind. The scene then shifts to Edelgard and George finding Santara's dead body. After that, we see Lane discussing the incident with Xi'an, who is skeptical of Yogiri and Tomo killing a sage. Xi'an then tells her not to interfere with the sage candidates, and asks her to help with the darkness. Lane agrees, and she leaves. Lane then asks one of her men to take the Immortal Corps squadron to Hanabusa. We then cut to Yogiri's group taking a forest break. Tomo wishes they ask the robot for transportation, but Yogiri highlights the risk of being seen with an invader. Just then, Mokomoko appears, and reveals that they've acquired a shape-shifting sword from the robot. Tomo wonders where had Mokomoko kept this sword, and she tells her that she had concealed it as her underwear, embarrassing Tomo. The following day, they reach close to Hanabusa city, and Tomo notices Yogiri looking a bit tired. He explains that he was busy killing the monsters, and bandits who tried to attack them. Tomo is surprised that she didn't notice them, and asks him if he has a usage limit on his power. Yogiri says that he can use it at any time, 
but just gets tired after using it. As they enter the city, they notice that the city uses barriers instead of walls. They reach the hotel which Celestina recommended to them, and as they enter the hotel, they meet one of their classmates named Tachibana, who tells them that he split with the group as he thought their leveling was inefficient. Just then, a few girls in Tachibana's group feel jealous, and Tomo wonders when he became such a Riz Lord. Tachibana tells her that they're his bodyguards, and introduces them. They are Erika, Stephanie, Chelsea, Euphemia, and Riza. Yogiri wonders what kind of ability he has to get these girls as his bodyguards, and Tomo tells him that he was always popular with the girls in high school, so he's a bit of a narcissist. Just then, Tachibana asks Tomo to become his lover, shocking Tomo, and making the other girls jealous. He also offers Yogiri to be his servant, and reveals that he has the Dominator class ability to dominate weaker beings. Tomo wonders why he's not training with his classmates in the primeval forest, and Tachibana begins to narrate his story. After clearing their first mission, they had a party, and a classmate named Oatori with the consultant class approached him. He had the ability to analyze other classes, and provide advice. He tells him that if no one becomes a sage from their group, they'll be turned into livestock. He advises him to buy a large number of cheapest level 1 servants, so that if his servants win a battle, and he makes the defeated opponents his servants, their XP will also come to him. Tachibana didn't know that he had this ability, and Oatori mentions that his ability allows him to see the hidden abilities of others. He thinks that they need many approaches to produce a sage, and everyone sticking together may be suicide, and that's why he's advising anyone who looks promising. This is why he's working independently now, and even as they speak his servant numbers and his level are rising. He then asks Tomo again to be his lover, but she declines the offer. He asks her to rethink it, and leaves. Tomo is pissed at his attitude, and Yogiri tells her that joining with Tachibana may be a safer option for her, which makes her even more mad. Later, we see Lane fighting an aggressor, and thinks that she's not suited to fight this one. We then cut to Tomo, wondering how long they'll have to stay in the hotel, and thinks it has already been three days since Yogiri went to sleep. She wants to go outside, and just then, they notice some commotion in the city, and we see that it's Lane's subordinate of the immortal army, who are looking for them. She then decides to stay in the room, and Moko teases her that it was Tomo who wanted to go outside just now. Moko then tells her that an enemy is targeting them, but she can't see her, and Tomo decides to wake up Yogiri. We then see Yogiri having a dream, who is woken up by Tomo's call, and as he leaves his room, we see Erika spying on Tomo with her invisible ability. Yogiri senses her using his ability, and kills her. He then informs Tomo that Erika had a killing intent towards her, and they decide to leave the place. Meanwhile, we see Tachibana in a dungeon, and notices that Erika's signal has disappeared. Just then, a monster tries to attack him. However, it's no match for him, and he easily defeats the monster. He makes the monster his servant, and orders it to collect more allies. After that, he wonders what happened to Erika, and checks her memory which shows her blacking out suddenly. He wonders if she was attacked from behind, but Euphemia mentions that she's a skilled assassin, so it's highly unlikely. He then wonders what she was doing there, and Euphemia thinks that she planned to kill Tomo as she thought Tomo might not be worthy of her master. Tachibana thinks that Tomo might run away after this, so he plans to use Riza and Chelsea to capture Tomo. After that, we see Lane attacking the aggressor, but it has no effect. Meanwhile, Yogiri and Tomo meet Riza on the way, and she stops them by freezing them using ice magic, but Yogiri manages to break her ice easily. Tomo wonders how he did it, and he says that he killed the icicle. Riza is shocked, and tries to attack him with another block of ice. Yogiri uses his power to destroy the ice block, and her staff. Yogiri threatens to kill her if she makes any move, and asks if she could still use magic, but she mentions that she could only use magic with a spell-embedded wand. He asks if she has any other wand, 
and she takes a wand out of her giant plot, while Tomo scolds Yogiri to not to stare at her. Just then, Tomo gets attacked by a doll, but she skillfully defeats it, and Yogiri is surprised by her martial art ability. More dolls appear, and when Riza tries to attack them, he kills her. Chelsea then commands the dolls to attack them, but Yogiri destroys them all, and she starts begging for mercy. Meanwhile, Tachibana learns about this, and thinks about a plan to ambush them. On the other hand, Yogiri and Tomo see many flies-like creatures, and realize that Tachibana has sent it to observe them. Yogiri says that he can kill them all, but they will fall on their heads. Tomo is freaked out by them, and gets mad at Tachibana. Meanwhile, Tachibana, who's watching them, thinks that Yogiri can't use his power when he's surrounded, and makes the fly creatures attack them. Yogiri then traces the source of the power, and kills Tachibana with his thought. Tomo notices that the flies didn't die, and Yogiri tells her that Tachibana's death has freed them, but he doesn't want to kill them just because they look unpleasant. Meanwhile, Stephanie tries to heal Tachibana, but it doesn't work. Euphemia notices that she's free from his control, so she decides to leave. As she steps outside she is shocked to see the darkness creature has wiped out everything. Lane sees her, and uses her spell to charm her. She makes her one of them, and asks her to reveal everything she knows. The scene then cuts to Yogiri and Tomo going out in town, and they hear a commotion. We learn that many people have become zombies, and the immortal army is behind it, while Tomo wonders when did this isekai fantasy turned into a zombie apocalypse. As the story continues, we see that Lane tells Euphemia that she's testing Yogiri's ability, and she wants to know if he can kill her. Meanwhile, Tomo wonders about the city being overrun by zombies, and asks Yogiri if they can save the city. However, Yogiri and Mokomoko think that they can't save the city in this situation, and decide to escape. We then see a man named Ryuta, who is angry at Masayuki for unleashing his undead army. Ryuta tells him that Lane has given this city under his control, so he should leave, but Masayuki tells him that he's doing this under Lane's order, and he should give him the key to the city. Ryota hands over the key, and Masayuki asks the zombies to stop. He then introduces himself to the people, and asks them to bring Yogiri and Tomo to him in an hour or else he will start moving his zombies again. Also, they shouldn't try to run as there are barriers around the city. Ryota is not pleased with Masayuki's announcement, as he had worked hard to develop the city to this point. We then see Tomo and Yogiri hiding from the citizens, and they wonder if they're being chased because Yogiri killed a sage. Just then, few people try to attack them, and Yogiri tries to warn them, but one of them still attacks. He kills him, and the others flee. Yogiri thinks that Masayuki sent these people as he thought Yogiri might not kill them, and this pisses him off. He decides to deal with Masayuki directly, and goes to meet him. Masayuki is surprised that they presented themselves willingly, and wonders if they're offering to sacrifice for the people of this city. Yogiri tells him that he just wants to get on the train to go to the capital, and asks Masayuki to take off the barrier. He wants to continue his journey, and in return he will let Masayuki live. Masayuki gets pissed by this, and he asks his immortal army to attack him. He thinks that Yogiri can't kill his army as they are undead, but to his shock Yogiri easily kills them all. Masayuki is shocked, and Ryuta surrenders. He tells Yogiri that he's the lord of this domain, but he has nothing to do with this incident. Masayuki wonders how the undead died, and Yogiri explains that to him anything which can move is alive, so it doesn't matter how they define dead or alive to him. Masayuki then tries to transform to attack Yogiri, but Yogiri kills him even before he could complete the transformation, while Tomo wished he had waited to let Masayuki transform first. After that, they learn from Ryuta that it was Lane who tried to kill them, and they are surprised as they thought it was Shion who was after them. Just then, Mokomoko alerts them about spirit manipulation, and Yogiri senses an intent to kill aimed at them from all directions. We see that all the people are heading towards them, 
and Ryuta tries to use the key to form a barrier, but it doesn't work. Meanwhile, Euphemia realizes that Lane is directly controlling the people to attack them and thinks it's dangerous, but this is Lane's plan, so that Yogiri sees her as a threat, as she's heard from Euphemia that he's capable of killing someone from a distance. We then see Yogiri and others surrounded by the people, and Tomo asks him if he can kill the source. Yogiri tells her that this time it's a bit different as in Tachibana's case they were linked through his servants. A few people then try to attack them, and Yogiri kills them. He knows that he's being tested, and he can kill them all in an instant, but notices Ryuta is in pain seeing his people die in front of him. Meanwhile, we see that darkness is about to enter the city, and Lane plans an unintentional attack which will hide her murderous intention. She then creates several copies of herself, and mentions that even if her body gets burned, she has the ability to revive herself instantly. She then orders her copies to start the attack if the darkness tries to attack or if it dies. We then see that darkness has entered the city, and Ryuta tells them that it's an aggressor. Tomo notices that everything it touches turns to dust, and wonders if Yogiri can kill it. Yogiri senses that something is off, but he still uses his ability to kill it. Just then, they get attacked by many beams from the sky, and Yogiri thinks that something is blending in with it. Tomo mentions that it looked like a woman dressed in red coming down from the sky, and Ryuta thinks that it must be Lane. Yogiri covers Tomo, and thinks that he can't detect Lane's attack as it has no killing intent directed towards him, and the clones are coming down way too fast. Tomo then asks him to continue his analysis after getting off of her, and Ryuta wonders if they're having plot development in the middle of chaos. Tomo wonders how there are so many of them, and Ryuta tells her that Lane has super regeneration ability, so she must have used it to create clones. Yogiri tells them that if the attack is directed at him, he can do something about it, and Ryuta then brings up the city view. He tells him that he has been watching the attacks, and it never attacks the same place. They decide to choose a point to wait there for the attack, and Ryuta uses his teleportation skill to teleport them there. Tomo then locates the next attack in the sky, and they run towards it. Yogiri uses his ability on the clone, and Mokomoko protects them from the attack. They survive the attack, and Mokomoko explains that she got this device from the aggressor, which can be used as shelter or armor. She wonders if killing all the copies would stop the attack, but Yogiri thinks that he has hit the bull's eye. Meanwhile, we see that Lane is shocked that all her vampire copies are dead, but she decides to make more of it with a different setting. Just then, Yogiri's attack affects her, and she is shocked as her main body which was in another dimension is dying. Just like the viewers, she wonders by what logic is this happening, but thinks that this is what she wanted, and this is how she will save that girl. Meanwhile, we see a little girl waking up from a coffin, and a recorded message from Lane tells the girl that she's the copy made from her. It also mentions that she's a separate person who doesn't have Lane's memories, and this is to protect her from Yogiri. The scene then shifts to Tomo bidding farewell to Ryuta, and thanks him for his help. She then asks Yogiri to drive, but he tells her that he has a habit of crashing into walls when he drives in the video game, so Tomo decides to drive herself. Tomo wonders if she can drive, so Mokomoko tells her that she'll install the driving technique of her Denura school, and they take off. Elsewhere, we see a sage candidate named Ryoko defeating some kind of monster, and the other girls praise her. As she returns to the camp, she meets another candidate named Carol, who is there to give her phone back. She mentions that she was trying to access Yogiri's monitoring tool, but she couldn't access it. Ryoko tells her that they should get their own tool, but Carol tells her that they did, but it's useless in this world. Just then, Ryoko gets panicked by a notification which mentions the Alpha Omega first door is opened. As the story continues, we see Tomo driving on a mountain road, and she's having a bit of difficulty, while Yogiri is asleep. She then notices a rock blocking their path, and we then cut to the past where a girl named Asaka Takatu is in a facility where Yogiri is kept. She's selected for the job, 
but learns that it's a dangerous job where she can't even complain even if she dies. She tries to leave, but her interviewer named Yukio Shiraishi stops her, and tells her that she can't leave either, so she's forced to sign the agreement. She wonders if it's a secret base of an evil organization, and Yukio tells her that they are a respectable facility that conducts experiments. He then tells her that she's here to take care of a monster, and Asaka is shocked. He then explains about the name Alpha Omega which is the beginning and end of the Greek alphabet, and it means everything or eternity. This is the code name of the test subject that she needs to take care of, and she wonders if the test subject is human, but Yukio has never seen it. All he knows is that Alpha Omega can kill people just by thinking, and Asaka wonders how she can look after such a monster. Yukio tells her that they can't leave the monster like this or humanity might perish, so they are trying to avoid this by giving it proper education. He then takes her to a vault, and mentions that he's not allowed to go further. He gives her an instruction manual to follow, and leaves. As Asaka enters the vault, it's a grassy landscape inside, and she can't believe that she's underground. She follows the map given to her, and finds a child who is Yogiri. She thinks that the scientists are idiots as they have locked down a kid, and she takes him outside to play. Yogiri then notices something behind her, and kills it. He tells her that it's a shadow of some kind and it might be evil as it tries to kill him sometimes. Yogiri then tells her that it's too late for today, so they can play tomorrow. She apologizes for getting carried away, and introduces herself. Yogiri introduces himself as Alpha Omega, and she then asks for his real name. He tells her that before coming here, they called him Lord Okakushi. He then tells her that he's hungry, and Asaka wonders if she has to cook. We then see Asaka searching in the kitchen to cook something, and she notices instant ramen. After that, we see them having instant ramen, and Yogiri likes it. Asaka then thinks that she has to think of a name for him, and she names him Yogiri. However, Yogiri takes his last name as her and makes it Yogiri Takatu. Asaka thinks that this makes them family, but she allows it, and teaches him how to greet people. The scene then cuts back to the present, where Tomo wakes him up, and informs that their path ahead is blocked. Yogiri then mentions that their main objective is to get back to their world, so they're trying to find the sage Xi'an in the capital, but thinks that there must be other ways to return. Tomo mentions that their classmates are also going to the capital, and Yogiri tells her to find another route for now. As Tomo tries to drive back, she crashes into a dragon, but as it tries to attack them Yogiri kills it. They then notice a swarm of dragons, and they all prepare to breathe fire, but Yogiri kills them all instantly with his ability. Just then, a golden dragon appears, and Tomo wonders if it's going to breathe thunder, but Yogiri doesn't feel any killing intent from it. The dragon then says that the two of them pass, and tries to fly away, but Yogiri threatens it to come back. The dragon returns, and transforms into a little girl. The girl mentions that they were testing if the two of them were qualified to meet the swordmaster or not. Yogiri wonders who she's talking about, and the girl is surprised that they are not here for the swordmaster. The girl explains that the swordmaster lives in this canyon, and he can bless them with a gift. Yogiri is not interested, and tries to leave, but she mentions that a swordmaster is equal to a sage. Yogiri thinks that they might get some information which could help them return home, but Tomo is hesitant as they are already lost. The girl mentions that she'll guide them to the capital if they agree to meet the swordmaster, and she introduces herself as Adela. Later, we see them arriving at a place where many people have gathered, and Adela informs them that these people are swordsmen who came here to become the next swordmaster. Today is the day of selection of the Knights of the Divine King, and the swordmaster named Durabe appears. He tells everyone to kill each other until only half of them are left, but Yogiri is not interested, and asks if he can leave. The swordmaster informs that if anyone escapes from here, everyone will be disqualified, and the group then starts killing each other. Few people come towards Yogiri, and he thinks that he has no choice but to kill. Just then, a knight protects them, 
and he thinks that no one understands the true intention of the Swordmaster who wants to see them take befitting action as a Knight of the Divine King. Tomo thinks that this guy is decent, and Yogiri notices some mages trying to attack the Knight, but he kills them. However, the Knight thinks that the Swordmaster did this to punish those who acted dishonorably. Just then, a guy cut in half crawls towards Tomo, and asks her to help him by placing the rainbow-colored stone on his hand. Tomo helps him, and he gets revived instantly. Since the round is over, the Swordmaster asks them to follow him as they are changing places, and Atala asks Yogiri to continue the trial. Yogiri is not interested, but Atala begs him, and Tomo thinks that they should continue as they haven't gotten any useful information yet. Afterwards, the knight introduces himself as Rick, and the other guy introduces himself as Linnell, who mentions that he came here as he was invited by a friend. Yogiri learns from Rick that the Divine King is the person who fought the Dark God a thousand years ago, and managed to seal it. Yogiri wonders if the Dark God is still a threat even though it was sealed, and Rick tells him that the Dark God has powerful followers who are working to resurrect him. Tomo then asks Linnell about the stone, and he explains that those are items which he gets as a compensation. He has always had terrible luck, and gets caught up in all sorts of disasters. The last time he was sacrificed to a mysterious cult ritual, but the goddess appeared before him, and she gave him these apology stones. He can also use three stones to exchange it for a random item, which he demonstrates, and gets a scrub. Also, the amount of stone that he gets depends on the misfortune he experienced that day. After that, they enter a hidden barrier, and notice a big tower inside. Mokomoko mentions that they should get out quickly as there is an evil miasma here. Linnell starts vomiting because of being affected by the miasma, but he heals himself using one of the stones. Tomo notices that she can't feel anything, and Mokomoko tells her that it's because she's protecting her. She then notices that Yogiri seems a little off, and then notices that the miasma is gone. Linnell notices that Atala is not with them, and Rick thinks that the barrier may only allow the participants to enter. They all then head inside the tower, and go to the top. The Swordmaster then shows everyone a barrier below the tower, and Tomochika notices that she can see a man and a woman where the woman's sword is sticking through both of them, and they are frozen. Rick mentions that they are the Divine King and the Dark God, and a mage named Frederica says that she'll solve everything by killing the Dark God. We learn that she's the friend Linnell mentioned earlier, and she uses her spell to attack the Dark God, but since the time is slowed down inside it, her spell slows down as well. After that, the Swordmaster announces the beginning of the test, and a girl explains that the goal is to reach down to the first floor, and another girl named Teresa asks her if they can directly jump from here, but the girl mentions that they need to acquire 100 points inside the tower. Also, some special participants will be added as well. Tomo then notices Yogiri looking troubled, and he whispers something to her, and Tomo is shocked to hear this. After that, they decide to head to the bottom of the tower, but just then Frederica stops Linnell, and asks him for the magic stone to restore her magic. He gives her the stone, but mentions that it only works on him, and she gets pissed. As they head down, they see that some people who went ahead were killed by traps, and now they just need to make sure that they don't activate remaining traps. Just then, Linnell steps on a trap, and gets stabbed by a spear, however, he recovers using the magic stone. Tomo thinks that he should always carry one stone as this keeps happening to him, and he ties a stone to his hand. He goes ahead with confidence, and enters into a room, but it seems to be another trap. We then see that Teresa has killed everyone in that room for points, and Rick asks everyone to get out, while he fights her. Tomo notices that there are thin wires all around the place, and just then Teresa attacks Rick. We learn that Teresa was a Knight of Divine King, and she's here to regain her title. However, Yogiri has had enough, so he uses his ability to kill her, and they find a severed Linnell's hand with magic stone, and Tomo finds him dying on the floor. After that, they reach the 98th floor, and the girl from earlier informs them that this is a safe zone area, which also has sleeping accommodation. 
They decide to go their own way, and wish each other the best. After that, Tomo and Yogiri learn that they have to share a room due to limited availability. In the room, Tomo is afraid of the plot development, but Yogiri lies on bed, and falls asleep. Meanwhile, we see that Linel is waiting for his midnight reward, and he gets a notification of a 20-year anniversary special reward. He uses the magic stone to draw his rewards, and the goddess who sent him to this world appears. He wonders if she's here to develop a plot with him, but she's just there to check up on him. She tells him that she has updated his save point, so no matter how many times he dies, he will start over from here, but Linnell thinks that this place is too dangerous for that, and she leaves. We then cut to Swordmaster with a girl, where the girl tells him that the number of dead people doesn't match up to the number of souls in the tower, but he thinks that the second barrier can deal with the required amount. We then see a girl named Aoi Hyanos, who's trying to kill a guy named Rakuto, who has refused to obey the gods, and now lives a peaceful life in the colony of the Beast Forest. Rikudo tries to attack her, but she uses her ability to negate all his attacks. Rikudo then tries to unleash his special move, but nothing happens, and she tells him that the power he received can also be taken back. He then uses his special high luck status sword to attack her, but she uses her ninja skill to slit his throat with a knife. The knife then starts speaking, and tells her that their next job is to execute Yogiri and Tomo. As she is leaving for her mission, Daimon appears, who was roaming around in the beast forests as per Yogiri's command, but he was taken in by Rikudo, and somehow managed to live. We then see Tomo waking up, and she's surprised to see Yogiri on her giant plots. She then hears Mokomoko calling, and sees her stuck in a wall halfway. She got stuck while she was trying to peep on Tomo and Yogiri, and it happened because the tower was able to gather all the souls of the dead, due to which there is quite a bit of suction in the walls and floors. Just then, Yogiri wakes up, and Mokomoko asks him for help. Yogiri then focuses on killing the suction mechanism, and Mokomoko gets free. She wonders why they would be gathering too many souls, and Yogiri tells Tomo to be prepared, as he's going to kill anyone whom he feels like an enemy. However, Tomo mentions that when he uses his ability, she thinks that she has done it herself, and she's not so rude to complain when he saves her. Yogiri gets shy hearing this, and they decide to have some food. Meanwhile, we see Aoi, who defeats a golden dragon, and tells Daimon that her ability can change a phenomenon to be just as she believes it to be, but she can't use it on an opponent with a high luck stat. The dragon then appears, and bites off Daimon's arm. He heals himself, and learns that she has only taken away its ability to fly, but just then it gets killed by an aggressor, who is here to gather some intel. As the aggressor leaves, she notices the tower which is covered by the barrier, and decides to head there. Daimon is against the idea of meeting Yogiri, but she drags him down with her. We then see Yogiri and Tomo, who are already halfway through using Yogiri's ability, and he even used it to kill the riddles and tricks as well. Just then, the creator of the tower named Iglesia appears, and he's a high wizard. He stops them from going out, to avoid risking freeing the dark god, but Yogiri kills him before he could even make a move. Meanwhile, Sword's master gets an alert about the first barrier being unstable, and all the traps stopping. We then see Rick, who has achieved 100 points, and on the way he sees Frederica who is helping Linnell get points. We then see Tomo and Yogiri entering some kind of arena, and they see two girls fighting. One of them is a bunny girl who is working for Masaki, and she attacks the other girl, but she manages to dodge. We find out that the other girl is actually a half-demon named Theodigia, and she plans to end the fight before the Swordmaster finds out. She continues fighting with the bunny girl, and as they fight Yogiri thinks that this fight is not going to end soon. He asks Masaki if he can let them through, but he mentions that his disciples don't have enough points yet. Yogiri tells him that they have only six points, and they are not trying to collect points. However, Masaki doesn't plan to let anyone leave midway, and Yogiri asks the demon girl, who tells him to do whatever he wants. 
Masaki then states that Yogiri and the others should have a three-on-three -three match with his disciples, and if they manage to win, he will let them pass. Masaki asks his disciples to go all out, but before they can even make a move, Yogiri kills them. He then tries to leave, and Masaki thinks of stopping them, but Yogiri kills him as well. Theodisia is amazed to learn that Yogiri did this, and asks for his help. Yogiri is not sure, but Tomo thinks that they should at least hear her out. Theodisia mentions that she's looking for her missing sister, and she came here as she suspects that her sister is imprisoned here. She wants their help, but helping her will make them enemies of the Swordmaster. Yogiri thinks that they've already broke the tower a lot, so they're already his enemies, and agrees to look together. Theodisia thinks that her sister might be underground as she can sense some presence there, and just then, we hear Frederica scolding Linnell for being slow and Rick tries to calm her down. They meet with Yogiri and the group, and later we see that they reach the hall, where we learn that 17 candidates have passed. The Swordmaster announces them all as the Knights of the Divine King, and just then, a girl with her clones, informs him of an emergency about tower barriers which are about to break. Just then, an explosion occurs indicating that the first barrier has broken, and a man with wings appears before them. Rick and others can feel an overwhelming miasma from him, and the Sword Master asks the candidates to fight him as their first mission as the Knights of the Divine King. Yogiri then tries to sneak to the underground, as he doesn't want to draw the Swordmaster's attention by killing that man. The man tells the Swordmaster that he'll spare his life if he tells him how to remove the second barrier, but the Swordmaster refuses, and he instantly kills a person. He starts killing them one by one, and a guy tries to attack him, but he's easily killed. Frederica tries to attack him with her magic, but it has no effect, and another person appears behind the man. They introduce themselves as Loot and Orgain. Frederica tries to attack them again, but Loot easily nullifies her attack, and turns her staff along with her hand into candy. Rick tries to fight him, and just then, Linnell gets a notification of a special draw. He uses all his gems, and it summons the goddess named Vahanato. She mentions that she'll take care of everything, and Linnell is relieved. However, it's revealed that she's their master, and she was using Linnell all this time. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri and group going down the stairs, but it doesn't seem to end, and Mokomoko thinks that a barrier may be manipulating the space here. Tomo asks Yogiri for help, but he mentions that if the barrier was created by Theodigia's friends then it could kill them. Just then, we hear a scream, and the barrier breaks. They reach the underground, and Theodigia is shocked to see some people in half-dead state in a container. Yogiri asks Tomo to stay, as he doesn't want her to see this. Theodigia mentions that these are her friends, but her sister is not among them. She puts them out of their misery, and breaks the container. After that, they decide to go up, and Theodigia plans to kill the Swordmaster. Back at the top, the Swordmaster thinks that this is the worst situation they could be in, and gives Rick the right to become Swordmaster. Swordmaster thinks that if he can draw the remaining power of the tower, he may be able to handle them. Linnell thinks that this is his fault, and he tries to buy them time by asking Vahanato about her plan. She tells him that her darling is the dark god Albagarma, who is in the middle of that barrier. She sent out souls to many worlds to search for him, and finally found him sealed here. She tried to free him by sending many people, but the Swordmaster beat them all. So, she thought if she sent someone with the worst luck, it could resurrect her darling, and the end of humanity would occur. Linnell is shocked to learn that his bad luck is being used to wipe out humanity, and Vahanato learns that the person who made the barrier is already dead, along with the godslayer who might have given her some trouble. Linnell tells her that he'll kill himself, but she mentions that she has taken away his ability, so if he dies, this time he'll die for real. She then grabs the core of the barrier, and destroys it. However, as the barrier lifts, only the Divine King remains, while the Dark God falls dead. Vahanato is shocked, and we learn that Yogiri had killed him earlier out of reflex. Just then, 
Theodigia makes her move, and kills the Swordmaster. Meanwhile, an aggressor attacks Vahanato, and Yogiri, and the group doesn't know what's going on. Lute heals her, and Orgain decides to sacrifice every human to revive his dark god. The demon army appears, and the divine king creates a barrier to protect Rick, Linnel, and Frederica. Yogiri thinks that this could be dangerous, and he asks Tomo and Theodigia to hold on, while he kills Orgain and his army. Theodigia wonders why he didn't kill Vahanato, and he mentions that he doesn't sense any killing intent from her, and we learn that she has gone nuts. Just then, Aoi and Daimon appear, and she asks Rick about Yogiri, but he mentions that they're busy with the current situation. Aoi uses her ability to check Rick's stats, and tells him that he's become the Swordmaster, so he can use his Holy Sword to defeat Vahanato. Rick then uses his ability, and kills Vahanato. Daimon then spots Tomo, and Aoi tries to use her ability to check Yogiri's stats, but as she tries to use it, she gets scared, and mentions that it's like the end of all the things has taken on a human form. Tomo then notices Daimon, and he tells her that Aoi forced him to come here. However, Aoi mentions that she's here to deliver him as he's their classmate, but they don't want him, and Daimon is pissed that he's been treated like a rejected old book. Aoi leaves, and Yogiri wonders if he lied about the collar. Daimon mentions that he didn't lie, and it's just that the collar had a limit, which he didn't tell him about. Later, Rick asks Theodigia about killing the Swordmaster, and Yogiri tells him to take a look underground, but if he still wants to take revenge for the Swordmaster, Yogiri will be on her side. Rick thinks that a powerless guy like him can't do anything, but the Divine King stops him, and reveals that he's the one who killed the Dark God and his minions. She thanks him, and Rick wonders who he really is. Yogiri mentions that he's just an ordinary school student who was summoned here, but Tomo thinks that there's nothing ordinary about him. Yogiri then mentions that they're planning to head to the capital, and everyone also has plans to head there. Theodigia mentions that her sister's name is Euphemia, and Yogiri and Tomo think that they have heard this name. Rick invites him to join on the ride to the capital, but Yogiri wants to travel alone with Tomo, so Rick gives them a map, and pendants that could get them out of trouble. They all head their own way, leaving Daimon all alone, and Lute approaches him, asking about what went down here. Meanwhile, Xi'an gets a report that they have lost contact with Aoi, and Yuichi tells her to ask other sage candidates about Yogiri, but she doesn't want to involve them. She decides to summon someone from Japan who knows Yogiri, and a guy from the facility appears, where Yogiri was kept. He takes out his phone, and mentions that he can see Yogiri's signal. Xi'an mentions that she had summoned Yogiri here, and he starts thanking her for being their savior. Just then a warning appears on his phone, which makes him panic, and he asks her to save him. He tells her to send him back, but just then his head explodes, and Xi'an wonders about Yogiri's true identity. After that, we see that the girl named Ayaka Shinozaki who died in the bus was woken up by the system, and it tells her that she's an android now. The system mentions that they are part of the AI unit group that brought her back to life, and tells her that she has to choose whether she should die or release the limiter. Ayaka doesn't want to die, so the system releases her limiter, and they tell her that they need enormous amounts of material to repair her damaged body. They tell her that she can use the dragon outside, and she eats the dragon. The story then cuts to Yogiri's past where we see Asaka cooking for Yogiri. She serves him the food, but he tells her that it's gross, and she tells him that he should never say that to a girl who cooks for him. Asaka then eats the food, and thinks it's really bad after eating. Later, she notices that one of her jobs is to provide Yogiri basic education, and she thinks about starting at the elementary level. We then see her teaching Yogiri, and just then someone comes into the house. Asaka notices that it's a robot that has come to bring them groceries, and she asks it to bring elementary school books, cookbooks, a TV, gaming console, and a dog. Yogiri then finishes his studies for the day, and they go outside where they admire the view, while Asaka wonders if she'll ever be able to return alive from this place. After that, Asaka submits a monthly report to Yukio, 
and he states that he didn't expect her to last for a month. She tells him that she has taught basic knowledge to Yogiri, but eventually it will be too much for her to handle. He tells her that they can use distance education, but she was hoping for more people. Yukio mentions that they have tried, but all of them keep quitting after the first night. She hates being locked up, and she hates this work, but Yukio hands her over the salary for this month. She's shocked to see such a huge amount, but then thinks that it's useless since she can't buy anything here. Yukio tells her that she can go out if she wants, and she's surprised to find this out, but wonders who will take care of Yogiri if she's gone. Yukio mentions that the robot will take care of it, and she immediately submits her vacation request. We then cut to Asaka waking up in an empty room, and she recalls going to the city, where she had a nice meal and did a lot of shopping. She then stayed a night in a super high-class hotel suite, but doesn't remember how she got here, and wonders if she has been kidnapped. Just then, she hears a voice, and it tells her that they are an organization which seals the calamities to prevent the destruction of the world. They just want to talk, and don't have any intention of harming her. Meanwhile, Yogiri asks the robot about Asaka, and learns that she's on a vacation. He feels lonely, and asks the robot about Asaka's whereabouts, but it tells him that only the researchers know about it. He wants to meet them, and she guides him to the gate, but tells him that it can't be open from inside. Yogiri then uses the camera, and tells the researchers to let him out, which causes panic among them. We then see Yukio arriving there, and he sees all the researchers are dead. Yukio learns that it was done by Yogiri, and is shocked to know that he can kill someone without even seeing them. One of the researchers tells him that the girl there is opening the doors for Yogiri, and anyone who tried to stop her died. Yukio asks the guard to shoot the girl, but the guard dies as well. Just then, Yogiri appears, and asks Yukio about Asaka. He tells her that she has been abducted by a certain organization which has a global reach, and they are powerless against them. Yogiri mentions that he will save her, and he asks Yukio to keep everything that happened here a secret from Asaka. We then see Yogiri at the international organization base, and it's the same scene we saw in the beginning where he kills everyone who tries to get in his way. Meanwhile, Asaka thinks that she should have gotten a more normal job, but just then, she hears some commotion, and is taken hostage by a girl. However, Yogiri kills her, and asks Asaka to head home with him. As they go out, Asaka sees the destruction, but she doesn't fear Yogiri. After that, they return to the research facility, and she asks Yukio about the situation, but he tells her that nothing is going to happen as no one can stop Alpha Omega. He mentions that they can't let her quit, and they will assign a guard to watch over her. She thinks that she doesn't feel like quitting now, also, if they leave him be, something worse might happen. She wants to do everything she can for him, and teach him to be happy. Story comes back to the present, and we see Tomo looking at Yogiri, and Mokomoko teases her, wondering if she's planning plot development with him. Just then, Yogiri wakes up, and she tells him that they've reached the royal capital. Mokomoko tells them that they've been surrounded by the guards, and they ask them to come out. The leader of the guard introduces himself as Torx, and he states that this vehicle belongs to the immortal army, but Yogiri tells him that they are not part of that. They were given the vehicle by the Lord of Hanabusa, and they are sage candidates. They then appraise their gifts, but think that it can easily be forged. Yogiri then pulls out the pendant given by Rick, and everyone kneels down. They allow them to enter, but just then, the youngest royal family member named David appears. He tells him that pendant means that they are Rick's accomplice, and they are the Knights of the Divine. He asks them to prove that they are the Knights of the Divine by showing their swordsmanship. Tomo thinks that they should leave, but Mokomoko mentions that this guy's level is low, and she can beat him with her skills. We then see Tomo fighting with David, and she defeats him by cracking his balls. Everyone is impressed, while Yogiri wonders about David who seems in a lot of pain. They then go inside, and Yogiri notices that the walls of the castle have protective barriers around them. 
David tells them that it was casted by the High Wizard Iglesia, and Yogiri recalls that it was the guy who he killed in the tower. David then shows them around the town, and Tomo notices a large number of martial artists there. David tells her that they are explorers, and they will challenge the underworld. Below the royal capital a dark god is sealed, and his pawns are trying to escape. Tomo wonders if there are more dark gods, but David doesn't know about it. Yogiri tells David that they will be fine from here on and he asks him to leave. David leaves, and Yogiri asks Tomo to decide if she can forgive her classmates for abandoning them. The scene cuts to Yogiri and Tomo in a hall with their other classmates, and they're greeted by the king of Mani. He tells them that they're here for their second mission, but one of the students named Shinya mentions that he shouldn't look down on them. The king tells him that no one has ever talked to him like this, and he cuts off his fingers before he could make a move. Everyone is surprised, and the king mentions that they need to accomplish great achievement to become sages. After that, we see Xi'an visiting Aoi, who has been traumatized by the horrors she saw when she tried to kill Yogiri, and mentions that he's not human. The blade tells Xi'an that she's been like this for a while, and tells Xi'an that they found out about Yogiri from a sage candidate named Daimon. We then see Daimon with Loot, begging for his life as he usually does, and Loot mentions that they will kill Yogiri. He tells Daimon that his lord sister was more powerful than him, and he shows him the key to a seal. He tells him that his lord sealed his sister away because she was too messed up, but Daimon tries to excuse himself to live a peaceful NPC life. However, Lute stops him, and as he doesn't know much about Yogiri, he decides to bring him along. Lute then drags him, while Daimon complains that he would have liked it more being dragged by a girl. Meanwhile, back at the meeting with the king, he tells them that if they can go to the underworld and defeat the Dark God, it will be acknowledged as a great achievement. He will provide them with a base, and mentions that the royalty has the ability to weaken the gift, so once he gets away from them, Shinya's fingers should heal. After that, Tomo shouts out to everyone, and they are surprised to see she's alive, while they still ignore Yogiri. We then cut to Rick and others arriving in the capital by train, and the Divine King goes to her church. She meets the Archbishop Hilaris, who guides her to her home, and asks about the sealing key. The Divine King doesn't know about it, and just then Hilaris uses an artifact to paralyze her. After that, Tomo and Yogiri talk with Suguru, who still doesn't have any regret for leaving them behind. Just then, a student named Sora Akino appears, and mentions they shouldn't be fighting in a world where they have so few allies. Yogiri has no idea who the girl is, and Tomo tells him that she's a famous idol back on Earth. We then cut to Yogiri in a room with two boys named Yugo Izumida with Cook Class, and Yukimasa Ehara with Reader Class. We learn that they think that Yogiri's class is Insect Killer, and just then a student named Siichi Fukai appears. He addresses Yogiri as Lord Okakushi, and mentions that he was asked to watch Yogiri, but he was never allowed to get close or look him directly in the eye. He then plucks off his eye, and mentions that it detects the supernatural, but it lost the power when he got here. He knows that Yogiri hasn't released his full power, and leaves. After that, we see Tomo with two girls, and Carol and Ryoko come there to talk with her. They pick up Yogiri from his room, and go outside. Ryoko apologizes to Yogiri, and asks Carol to do the same or Yogiri might kill them. Yogiri is surprised that they know about them, and they tell him that they are from the agency, while Fukai is from a cult. They have been tasked to watch over him, and Yogiri asks about the current situation, while Carol is more interested to know if he had any plot development with Tomo. The scene then cuts to Euphemia remembering about her older sister, and another vampire tries to kill her, but she uses Lane's power to kill her and seize her memories. After that, Yogiri learns that everyone used Akino's skill to vow that they won't use their gift against their classmates, and if they break this vow they will die. They wonder why Yogiri decided to meet up with the class, and he mentions that he wanted to meet Xi'an so that they could return home. 
Ryuko mentions that becoming a sage is their only option, and Yogiri decides to work together with them for now. After that, we see the girls in their uniforms to raid the underworld, and Rick comes there as their guide, surprising Tomo. Meanwhile, we see that the boys are being guided by David, and he mentions that the royal family has the power to suppress the monsters of low rank. Haruto asks him to not intervene using his powers as this is a test to measure their strength, and David decides to guide them to the place where the monsters appear. We then see the girls fighting the monsters, and Tomo is surprised to learn that Rick is the prince of this kingdom. Tomo then fights some monsters as well, and they are surprised to see how good she is. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri fighting some monsters, and he senses their killing intent to place his sword in that direction, which kills them. He keeps doing the same, and the other guys are impressed by his power. We then see Daimon in the capital with Lute, who has cross-dressed as a girl, but this doesn't please Daimon. Lute tells him that his lord's sister is sealed somewhere in the underworld, but he doesn't know the entrance, and Daimon suggests going to a tavern to get some information. Meanwhile, we see Euphemia walking somewhere, and she then stops to a horse that belongs to the little girl that was woken up by Lane. She bows down to the girl, and the girl introduces herself as Risley. After that, we see Daimon and Lute in the tavern, and they learn that there's a festival going on as a celebration for the sage candidates who reached the fifth floor of the underworld in a few days. Daimon then notices Shinya's group, and thinks he can't let them see him. Loot uses his magic to block their perception, and we see that Shinya and his group are jealous of Yogiri getting all the girls. Just then, a girl approaches them, and they are surprised to see that it's Ayaka. She then attacks Shinya, and others try to help, but she beats him to death. She tells his friend to let their classmates know that she will kill one of them every day. Daimon thinks that Ayaka is upset as she was left behind, and realizes that she'll be coming after him as well. After that, Xi'an comes there, and Daimon tries to run away by mentioning they need to gather info on the underworld, but she stops him saying she will provide all the info they need. She then asks about Yogiri, and Daimon tells her everything he knows about Yogiri. Loot mentions that he's going to kill Yogiri, but Xi'an thinks he can't do anything. Daimon asks them not to involve him in their plans, and Xi'an tries to kill him, but Lute manages to turn her attack into whipped cream. Daimon reminds Xi'an that she has to give info on the underworld, and Xi'an tells them that there are many entrances throughout the city. They can buy an entry ticket from the tavern as well, and she leaves as she thinks there is no point in killing him after giving the info. We then cut to Yogiri in a room with his group, and he asks Tomo about the progress they made in the underworld. She mentions that they will enter the sixth floor tomorrow, and Yogiri thinks that the Dark God is on the seventh floor. Carol mentions that the deadline is a month, and they may not make it. Yogiri doesn't care even if they fail as long as he gets to meet Xi'an. The girls then inform him about Shinya's death by the hands of Ayaka, and he thinks that she died in the bus. After that, we see Yuichi reporting to Xi'an about the sage candidates who will be arriving on the seventh floor soon, and Xi'an wonders if it's too easy for them. She wonders if she should give them some trouble, but Yuichi mentions that it's not easy to defeat the Dark God. He wonders what she plans to do with Yogiri, but she's not sure. Just then, Haruto comes there, and mentions that he found her place using his problem-solving ability. He asks Xi'an for an extension to their deadline, and Xi'an mentions that she'll consider it if he can get rid of Yogiri. After that, we see Ayaka who can't seem to find her classmates, and just then, the system tells her that they have succeeded in analyzing the dragon she digested. She can now use dragon sense to locate her classmates, but just then, she gets hit by a rock. The attack continues, and she uses her dragon wings to fly to the location where the attack was coming. She finds that it was her classmate Riona Shirayama with Gorilla Class, and they engage in a fight. However, Riona is no match for her, and Ayaka cuts off her hand. Riona tells her that she would have beaten Ayaka if her abilities weren't sealed, and Ayaka learns about the royal family's ability to weaken Gift's power. 
she tells Riona that she will fight her when the seal is gone, and leaves. Meanwhile, we see Daimon and Lute on the first floor of the underworld, and they meet a girl. Lute recognizes her as his dead lord sister named Mana, who came there as she smelled the scent of her brother on Lute. Elsewhere, we see that the leader of the assassin guild named Ryasuk Miyanaga receives a letter to kill Yogiri. After that, we see that Tomo is pissed at Yogiri for slouching in his room, but he tells her that he's training to control his powers better so that he can get information from Xi'an. Yogiri then tells her that when he went around town earlier he was targeted, and he needs her help. Back in the underworld, Daimon wonders how Mana is roaming freely as she's supposed to be sealed, but Mana tells him that her kind brother had made a loose seal which she could escape whenever she wanted, while Loot thinks that his lord put every bit of strength to make that seal. Mana tells Loot that she can smell something that belongs to her brother, and Loot then shows her the key. Meanwhile, we see Ayaka infiltrating the king's chamber, and she asks him to deactivate the seal that weakens the power of the gifts. The king tries to fight her, but he's no match for her, and gets killed. Ayaka thinks that the king was too weak, and leaves thinking the seal must be deactivated since he's dead. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Daimon sees some children's, and Mana mentions that these are her children's. Lute explains that they were born out of her imaginations, and Daimon is shocked. We then see Ayaka visiting Ryan, and she tells her that she has killed the king, so they can now have a proper fight. They start fighting, and Riona starts attacking Ayaka, but Ayaka uses her dragon fangs to cut off her hand, and uses her dragon tail to strangle Riona to death. After that, we see Yogiri and Tomo in the town, and we find out that Yogiri wants Tomo to locate the assassin that is trying to target him. Just then, we see a sniper trying to target Yogiri, but he's being forced by a girl, and as he tries to pull the trigger, he dies. The girl then tells Ryasuk on the other side to target the girl, and we see that Yogiri saves Tomo from getting shot by the sniper. Yogiri then threatens to find them through the drone camera, and Ryasuk is terrified. Mokomoko tells them that she has tracked the signal through the drone, and she can lead them to the mastermind. Ryasuk tries to escape through the helicopter, but Yogiri kills the helicopter, and Tomo takes him down. Mokomoko then shows him his spirit guardians that tried to attack them, and Ryasuk is shocked that she managed to take both of them down. Ryasuk then summons a Fenrir, but it gets instantly killed. He then summons the Queen of Hell, but she gets killed as well. Just then, the girl from before throws a knife at Yogiri, but he doesn't kill her, and Tomo catches the knife. He calls the girl by the name Enju, and we learn that she's a robot. He commands her to shut down, and asks Ryasuk to reveal everything. Elsewhere, Haruto wonders if Yogiri is truly invincible while looking at his file on a computer. The scene cuts to the underworld, where we see Lute giving Daimon the key, and he tells Daimon that the person holding it will become the master's proxy, so he won't be killed. Daimon wonders why Lute isn't holding on to it, but he thinks that Mana will not let him live as he let his lord die. We then cut to Ryasuk telling everything to Yogiri, and we learn that he has the power to copy anything, even from Yogiri's world. Yogiri is angry about him making a clone of Enju and attacking Tomo, so he kills him. Meanwhile, we see Mana inside the seal, and asks Daimon to put in the key, while Daimon wonders about the point of the seal from which she can walk away freely. The scene then cuts to Yogiri telling Tomo about Enju, who is a friend he used to play with back on Earth, and this robot is based on her. He only wants this robot to put to rest, as he doesn't want a copy of her wandering around in this world. We then see Ayaka fighting a classmate named Yugo Izumida with a cook class, and he manages to cut through her dragon scale barrier. Ayaka then hits him with a dragon claw, but learns that it was just one of his many clones. The clones then attack her, and we see another student named Yukamasa Ehara, who reads in his book that Yugo is going to be burnt alive, and we see Ayaka using her dragon breath to kill Yugo. Just then, Tomo and Yogiri arrive there, and they are surprised to see Ayaka alive, but she takes off. 
After that we see the Yogiri's class having a meeting about Ayaka's killing, and we learn that 8 of them are killed, while 18 of them are still remaining. The class idol Sora mentions that those who can fight Ayaka are on a conquest in the underworld, and due to this, they have been asked to leave from the kingdom immediately. Sora mentions that they will have to clear their objective soon, so they will attempt to go underworld together. We then see the entire class on the sixth floor of the underworld, and they encounter over 5,000 monsters. They all work together, and manage to defeat the monsters easily. Meanwhile, on the seventh floor, Loot tells Mana about his lord's death, and he wants her to take revenge. Mana tells her that she's going to take revenge, but before that she'll give birth to her brother using the essence that Loot has on him, and she takes away his hands. Next, she's going to take his brain as it will have the memory of his brother's body, but Daimon asks her to help Loot first in taking revenge. Mana agrees, and she asks him to release the seal, and Daimon puts in the key. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri's class have set up a camp on the sixth floor, and they are having a feast. Tomo notices that Yogiri is not there, and goes to look for him. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri outside playing games, and he notices David heading towards a cliff. He stops David from falling off, and suddenly, the ground starts to shake. Meanwhile, we see Xi'an arriving at the feast, and she mentions that this trial seems too easy, so it is time for an awakening event to bring out a sage among them, and she orders them to fight each other until one of them is alive. Just then, Ryuko gets an alert that the second door of Alpha Omega is about to open, and we see Yogiri and David falling off the cliff. After that, we see Theodigia attacking a few people, and she defeats them, but the leader runs away. We learn that the people were transporting a few half-demons, and just then, we see that the leader is killed by Euphemia, and she's surprised to see her sister. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Xi'an mentions that the students have one hour for the test, and after that she'll kill anyone who hasn't killed someone. The last one standing is going to be the winner, and the students think this is absurd. Just then Siichi approaches her, and mentions that since they can kill anyone here, Xi'an should also be part of it. She tells him that he can try, and Siichi uses his instant death ability to kill her, but nothing happens. He wonders why his gift isn't working on her, and she tells him that it's working, but she came back to life after she died. Siichi keeps trying again, and Xi'an tells him that she levels up every second with complete recovery. She then blows his head off, and asks the students to not waste time. We then see Tomo searching for Yogiri, but she meets with Ramiko and Jayuna who are in a panic. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri falling with David, but he kills his momentum, and lands safely with David who is still unconscious. He realizes that he's on the seventh floor, and we see Mana's barrier has been lifted. Daimon then tries to leave with Loot, but he notices that his feet are sticking to the ground. Loot mentions that Mana's body is expanding, and she's preparing to give birth to his master. Loot asks Daimon to escape, and kicks him out to save him, while he gets absorbed by Mana. We then see Theodigia with Euphemia and Risley, and she finds out that her sister has become the origin of the blood. Theodigia wonders why they are going to the capital, and Risley mentions that she's going to meet Yogiri, but she's not sure if he'll still be there. Theodigia tells her that Yogiri was also heading to the capital, and Risley is surprised that she met him. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri talking to Mokomoko over the phone, and he finds out about Battle Royale. Just then, Daimon comes out running away from a slime, and asks Yogiri for help. Yogiri kills it, and asks him about a way to get back to the sixth floor. Daimon mentions that he can use a shortcut, and he can take him there if Yogiri can protect him. Yogiri agrees, and asks Daimon to carry David, much to his shock. We then see a girl named Kyoko with Gunslinger class entering a room, and Yukimasa is hiding in the attic. He reads his future in the book where he gets killed by Kyoko, and he rewrites it where Kyoko meets Ayaka. Meanwhile, Tomo learns from Mokomoko that Yogiri is on the seventh floor, and he's trying to get here. Tomo thinks that since she doesn't have the gift, they should be fine hiding there. 
Just then, she hears some gunshots, and wonders why everyone is eager to fight each other, while Mokomoko thinks that it might be the influence of the system. We then see Daimon leading Yogiri to an elevator, and he tries to leave, but Yogiri realizes that only Daimon can operate this escalator, so he asks him to come with them. Meanwhile, we see Yukimasa standing at the exit door of the elevator, and he finds out from the book that Yogiri and Daimon will be coming here. He thinks about killing them, and tries to rewrite the future in his book, but it always results in him dying. Just then, the elevator opens, and Yogiri kills him. After that, he tries to contact Mokomoko, but there's no answer from her. Just then, Daimon gets a notification about entering into Sage Candidate Selection, and Yogiri thinks that this is good, as if Daimon tries to leave this area, Xi'an will come to kill him. The scene then cuts to a girl named Mei, where she hears a voice, and a solid cube falls on her. We learn that it was done by a student named Osamu with Carpenter class, however, the girl teleports before them, and they are shocked that she's still alive. Another student named Masahiro with Transporter class tries to kill her by teleporting lava above her, but she's still unharmed. She tells them that no attacks work on her, and she kills Masahiro with a light punch. She tells Osamu how she died when two powerful cats were fighting, but they revived her, and they granted her power. She then kills him as well, and receives notification of Daimon's participation in the battle. Mei then teleports to Daimon, and she tries to attack Yogiri, but he punches her back. Mei is shocked that one of the cats who granted her power is dead, and the other cat gives her power to attack, but it gets killed as well. Daimon tells her that the source of her power is dead, and she runs away into the forest. We then see Kiyoko and Ayaka in a fierce battle, and meanwhile, Mokomoko notices some ghosts around them. She thinks that there are some electromagnetic disturbances due to which they can't contact Yogiri, and some ghosts surround them. A girl named Mikochi with necromancer class comes there, and she shows her guardian spirit named Tianu, while Tomo is jealous that her guardian is so pretty. Mikochi mentions that Tianu can only do counting, so she wants Mokomoko, and uses her ability to possess Mokomoko. Mikochi then uses her technique to attack Tomo, and Mokomoko mentions that she can't control her body. Mikochi mentions that she also has control on the battle suit that Tomo is wearing, and she destroys it, leaving Tomo naked. Just then, Yogiri appears, and he covers Tomo with his coat. Yogiri realizes that she's using Mokomoko, but he mentions that he'll have to kill her if she keeps attacking them. After that, we see Sora fighting some students, and she starts killing them by sacrificing her fans which explode on her will. Just then, a blue slime appears, and starts devouring her and other students. Haruto tries to fly away, but sees huge red slime surrounding the capital. Meanwhile, Makochi wonders why Mokomoko is so afraid of Yogiri, and she hears a voice. She thinks that this is her awakening, and releases Mokomoko. She accepts the new power and tries to attack them, but gets killed by Yogiri. Tomo then notices Daimon, and Yogiri explains how he plans to use him to get to Xi'an. Meanwhile, we see that Ayaka is about to kill Kiyoko, and she summons a strange weapon, and passes out. On the other hand, Yogiri and the team are united by Carol and Ryuko at the exit. Just then, Yogiri notices something, and asks everyone to get behind him, while the whole area gets nuked. After that, we see that 60% of Ayaka's body is destroyed, and the system tells her that it will take some time to heal, but if she uses Dragon Heal she can heal immediately. However, if she uses it, she'll completely transform into a dragon permanently. Ayaka doesn't care, and uses Dragon Heal, which heals her, but it also transforms her into a dragon. Meanwhile, we see that Yogiri and others have managed to survive as well, and Ramako mentions that the second gate of Alpha Omega can even kill the laws of physics, but Yogiri is more worried about finding the trial room to meet Xi'an. We then see Ayaka who is determined to get her revenge, and she creates many dragon warriors. Daimon notices the dragon warrior coming to attack them, 
but they are killed instantly by Yogiri. The system realizes that it's done by Alpha Omega, and explains to Ayaka that the system was created in the event that humanity was destroyed by Alpha Omega. The system tells her to retreat, but Ayaka is still hell-bent on her revenge, and charges in, only to be killed by Yogiri. After that, the group continues to get out from this place, but they encounter Xi'an. Just when she starts to mock Yogiri, she falls down, and learns that he killed her ankle. Xi'an tries to attack him, but he kills some fingers, and he warns him not to try to kill him, as he may accidentally kill her. He asks about returning to his original world, and tells that he's going to keep killing her bit by bit until she feels like talking, but she teleports back to her hideout. She cuts off her hand, and regenerates, but the fingers don't heal. Just then, Yuichi appears, and Yogiri starts killing his body parts as well. Xi'an returns back to Yogiri, and asks him to spare Yuichi. Yogiri mentions that if she answers his questions he won't attack, and tells her that he can kill her wherever she goes, and also the person she lays her eyes on. Xi'an tells him that there's currently no way to go back, and he tells her that Daimon had managed to go back before. She mentions that it was because at that time the link to his world was maintained, but now it's been destroyed. He then asks her for the coordinates for his world, and she gives him a long list. Tomo is surprised that it's too long, but Mokomoko mentions that she can memorize it. Yogiri then asks her about the energy they need to get back, and she gives him a philosopher's stone. She tells him that if he can gather enough stones, he can get home. Yogiri realizes that the other sages he killed also had this stone, and Xi'an mentions that the stone loses its power when the sage dies. Yogiri asks her about the other sage's location, but she doesn't know, and he thinks that this might take forever. After that, the group leaves towards the exit, and Xi'an tries to go back to Yuichi, but just then the slime from Mana stops her from leaving. Xi'an realizes that Mana is the dark god who was sealed in the underworld, and she tries to get away by sacrificing her leg, but Mana still manages to get hold of her. She disables Xi'an's abilities, and starts devouring her, but before Xi'an dies she mentions to remember the name Yogiri as he will kill her. Meanwhile, in the capital, we see some aggressors fighting each other, and just then the slime from Mana takes out one aggressors. We then see Rick who uses his sword skills to slow down the slime, but thinks that it won't hold it much long, and wonders if the sage candidates have released the dark god seal. Meanwhile, we see Yogiri and others have managed to make it out of the underworld. They see Hilaris who's happy that Mana has awakened, and David asks him what he's doing, but Yogiri kills him as he sensed a killing intent from him. The group sees that the slime has managed to break through the barriers of the town, and Daimon thinks that this is his fault as he released the seal of Mana. Yogiri realized that this is why Daimon was in a hurry to leave, and just then, Mana appears in her slime form. She asks Daimon to take him to Yogiri who killed her brother, and Daimon rats him out instantly, but before she can attack him, Yogiri kills her. After that, David guides them to the roof, where he shows them a plane, and Yogiri tells Daimon that they can't take him with them as the plane won't hold them all. Mokomoko mentions that she has another way, and asks others to use the plane. After they leave, Mokomoko transforms Tomo's suit which reveals most of her plot armor, and mentions that Tomo can fly with this along with Yogiri if he holds on to her. Yogiri wastes no time to grab onto her, and they fly out of the capital. Yogiri wonders what they should do next, and Tomo thinks that they should take a break for a while. They decide to head to the nearest town, and they notice that Daimon has run away. Carol and Ramako ask if they can tag along, and Yogiri agrees, but he tells them that he can't take their responsibility, and he's only trying to get enough energy to get back home with Tomo. Just then, Risley comes in her carriage, and she introduces herself to Yogiri. She then asks him to marry her, but he rejects her instantly. Theodigia and Euphemia also come from the carriage, and Yogiri is glad that they have united. Risley then gives him a philosopher's stone, and asks him to reconsider her request. 
Meanwhile, we see that the Divine King is shocked to see Dark God defeated, and thinks that she can't leave a monster like Yogiri alone. Elsewhere, an aggressor takes Haruto with him, and Daimon is seen running away, and he hopes to create his own harem in this world. We then see Yogiri's group traveling in Risley's carriage, and Yogiri is resting on Tomo's lap. He recalls Asaka telling him to use his powers any way he likes, but asks him to not get caught up in other people's thoughts and ideals. Back in present Risley is feeling jealous, while Yogiri sleeps soundly on Tomo's lap. This is where the video ends, hope you liked my recap. Thanks for watching.